So today we're not starting off with a bang. We're not doing the usual season three pig cake where we start off and there's explosions everywhere. We're not doing that in this episode. We're starting a little bit serious because we got some hate. We got some hate that I got to address. And you know what happens with hate? Whenever there's hate, there's response. And whenever there's a response, there's, there's explosions. <laughs> Season three, episode three, starting off with a bang. You might want to ride the train, ride the pig cake train. Get on the like, subscribe, notification, whatever, whatever the fuck these other people do. But listen, you want to get on that because you don't want to miss this very important information here. So recently, Brian Connor, a member of the pig cake community, a longtime fan and a longtime lover of all things pig cake, he sent me a picture that he took of Facebook that somebody graciously put one of my videos up which happened to be the last episode and uh, the responses that came from this and oh boy oh boy were the responses hot now the title of this video if you haven't noticed it's why vernon was an overrated hack now that's what i'm calling the trick that i'm going to show you guys later today that's what i'm going to call the little bit of a tutorial but if you noticed i did a little bit of clickbait that's a little bit of clickbait and the reason i did that clickbait is because of a comment left by one of these individuals now in season three episode two your boy talked about some serious things when it came to magic why magicians are the worst and let's be honest magicians are the worst we're here doing card tricks thinking that somehow we're superior than other people just because we know how to find selected cards so of course magicians took offense to this and they put their opinions known on facebook so i'm going to be putting it up right now with some excellent b-roll uh some quality that you could only expect from this channel but uh the first person here which i'm not going to name but his name rhymes with dick he said, absolute idiot, knows nothing about magic or magicians. The thing, he calls me a thing, by the way, I think that's kind of racist. I'm an individual, I'm a person, I'm a cisgendered white male. For some reason on Instagram, people keep leaving comments saying, oh, I thought you were black. I thought you were a black person because they saw this and they realized that I'm white or uh, somewhat white. So uh, keep thinking I'm black, that's kind of cool. I like that aesthetic. This thing tries to promote their magic school in the middle of the video, skip past that part. You're telling me this guy skipped past the most important part of every video, which is why I plugged the Pick K Card Academy. That's right, two videos every single week. As a matter of fact, today I dropped two videos and today I'm dropping two videos because this video comes out at 10, those videos come out at 11, scheduled because that's what your boy does. Your boy's on top of this. Two videos every single week, over 200 videos already going over card and coin stuff, all the way from a beginner to expert level, next level virginity magic. So join $5 a month, it's super cheap. Rave reviews all around. People are saying, wow, hey, I don't even do magic, but I joined your academy and I'm, I'm killing them. I'm killing these guys. So join today, $5 a month, support me and support yourself. That's the most important part. He skipped that part. That's what uh, Mr. Dick was saying. This kid idiot is the worst. It's some young guy hiding behind a pair of sunglasses and a ski mask who, who knows nothing about the world, doesn't understand being an entertainer. Oh, so I'm a kid, eh? Ah, oh, man, that's cool. That's cool. I like that. I like that. This guy thinks that I'm some sort of kid. I don't mind that. I'll keep that one. The, the younger people think I am, the better. Uh, I tend to feel a little bit older in my skin. And anytime one of these uh, older chaps says, hey, you're just a young man. I'm like, oh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. He only makes one good point in half of the video I could stand to watch. When a magician approaches a crowd of people they don't know, they should say no. I don't think I even made that point, honestly. I don't even think I made that point. But uh, he didn't even watch the entire video. So this guy's judging me, saying that I'm uh, the absolute worst just because of my appearance. Just because of my, my what, my black skin? If you have to hide behind a mask, then your words are meaningless and you are a coward. You lack the courage of your convictions. If this is a marketing technique telling want to be magicians and others how bad they are and why they need whatever he's offering, fail. That idea doesn't even make it out of marketing 101. Oh man, I gotta tell you, this is precisely why magicians are the worst. This self indignant, righteous individual who thinks that he's correct just because he happens to have a difference in opinion. You know what? That's your opinion, buddy. You're allowed to have it. All right. I shared my opinion on a platform. You're sharing your opinion. And my opinion is that your opinion is fucking retarded. I could do that. I could do that. That's well within my, um, my rights, well within what I'm allowed to do. So, uh, that's just what somebody mentioned in response to that video guess he didn't like it. The next person though is the reason I titled this video and titled the trick that I'm about to show you uh, the, the way I did. 
Clickbait for magicians? I love it. What's the next one? Why Vernon was an overrated hack? Click here for righteous indignation. You know what? Vernon was an overrated hack, buddy. Vernon was an overrated hack. Yeah, Vernon dropped some good stuff and pretty much laid the foundation for card and close-up magic for uh, probably centuries to come. But you know what? Just because it's old doesn't mean it's good. That's why you're not good because you're old, all right? And people assume, oh, look, this thing came out of the 80s. This thing came out of the 70s, 60s, 50s. So therefore, it must be good. Houdini sucked. I'm going to be the first one to say it here. I, actually, many people have said it. Houdini sucked. All right, dude couldn't even shuffle cards to save his life. If you put a gun to Houdini's head and you said, hey man, I want you to show me a card trick that you don't completely flash. Or if not, I'm gonna uh, paint the room with your brain matter. Guess what? Within the next two seconds, you're gonna have to redecorate. So that's just a little bit of a rant on uh, that comment. But you know what? It's fine, it's fine. I welcome the hate, I want the hate. This is what I want. I want people to respond in whatever way they deem fit. But you don't know me. All right, the ski mask is an aesthetic. All right, this is something new, something for season three, and you're already shitting on it, uh, Mr. Dick. Disgusting. So today's card trick is a little bit of a hot one. It's a little bit of a Monty. I like Montys. It's a quick one though. It's not one of these uh, elongated, long Monty routines, but it's definitely one that's cool. I'm gonna be using the uh, Jerry's Nuggets by the hotness of collaboration between Jerry's Casino and Expert Playing Card Company, preview edition 2019. Thank you, thank you for sending me. I would hope I would get more uh, without having to drop money, but you know what? I'm probably gonna have to, so that's fine. Uh, but thank you guys. Uh, I'm gonna be using this hot deck of cards to illustrate this trick. And uh, to do that, I'm gonna have to drop, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of a transition here, a little bit of a drop, drop meme. So uh, here we go, let's just uh, do that right now. <sighs> One day, man. One day. I can't wait to go to school tomorrow. That's what I can't wait to do because they're gonna find out. You know, I really don't like this camera angle because you could see how short I am, even though I've mentioned uh, that I'm 5'2 several times. And some people are like, what, huh? How are you 5'2, uh, pay cake? That's crazy, dude. I thought you were black. Here's a little bit of a life hack, by the way, if you don't have a deck set up. This is a, a move I got from Chris Mayhew. It's a super easy move to get the deck set up uh, whenever you don't necessarily have the deck set up. So let's, let, let me show you how to do that. It's right here. Hmm, okay. There you go, now I'm good, okay. So for this trick, we're only gonna need a couple cards. We're not gonna need uh, all the cards in the deck. As a matter of fact, this is a, a reason why you shouldn't play any sort of Monty with anybody in the street. You know the Monty, right? Uh, some guy has uh, a couple cards and what they do is that they try to shill you, they try to get you to lose, right? Usually they have like two jokers and an ace and they say, hey, follow the ace, follow the ace, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you pick top, middle, bottom. They're going to show you the wrong card regardless. They could show you on the bottom that you have a joker, so you would have lost, right? It doesn't matter if you have that bottom card as a joker because the top card is also a joker. They could show you that fairly easily. And uh, if they wanted to, if you happen to say, oh, it's in the middle, the ace is in the middle, well, I guess that card is also a joker as well. But sometimes, you know, their buddies come in. Sometimes their buddies come in and uh, they want to make them win. So then other people looking could be like, oh, maybe there's a chance. Maybe I have a chance. You don't have a chance. You don't have a chance. Uh, but that looks like this uh, where all the cards are actually uh, money cards. So all the cards are aces. Um, oh boy, what a fun one. What a fun one. You like that? You like that? I'm gonna show you how to do that because this is a, a super fun trick to do. And um, well, you're gonna learn it. You're gonna learn it. All you need are four cards. You need four cards here. You need four cards. And we're gonna make use of the uh, Henry Christ Animan alignment move. This move has been credited to both Theodore Animan and Henry Christ, of which I used to call Henry Christ for the first, uh, I would say six years of my life, thinking that somehow maybe he was related to the one from um, Nazareth. But no, he's his own man. He's his own individual. Uh, so this is going to make use of that move to show the Jokers three times and hide one of the aces. So it's a great, great little bit of subtlety there. So the setup. You have four cards. You're going to turn the third one face up. So the third uh, ace here is going to be face up. And you're going to be ready to go. You're going to be ready to uh, blow some uh, loads. So you're going to talk about whatever Monty ish sort of powder you want to talk about. And uh, you're going to refer to the fact that anytime one of these people want to make you lose, they can just show you that you have a losing card. It doesn't really matter. And you're going to show the first one by just turning your right palm over like this. 
So the next one, this is when you're going to do the uh, Christ alignment move. And this is going to allow you. See, I said it again. I said it again. The, the Christ animan alignment move. You're going to be doing that here to show the top card as a joker as well. It's a great move. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull down on the top card. You're going to use your middle finger to push up on that middle card. At the same time, your thumb is in the back here. So I want you to notice what happens here. When you push this card up and your thumb is in the back, you're going to align this top card with the rest of the packet. So your thumb is going to act as a little bit of a stopper. So what that's going to do is that that's going to allow you to keep this top card squared with those bottom two cards. So right now, this top card is squared with this face-up ace as well as the bottom joker. You're going to pull down and then you're going to push up squaring this card up with the rest of the packet. What this is gonna allow you to do is that if you pinch this packet right here, if you pinch it, notice my hand comes up and brings this out jaw card to a uh, mechanics grip. If I pinch this and turn these cards over, so I pinch, I remove it, and I turn these cards over on top of the packet, it makes it look like that top card is now the Joker. So let's go over that one more time here. Uh, in I'm gonna say South American slow motion. Some people have been complaining, saying, hey, Piggy, I'm from uh, West Germany. We no longer have division here, all right? Thanks to the 1990 breaking of the WAP. You know what? South America is still pretty divided. So I'm gonna do this in a Eastern South American slow motion here. You're gonna pull down the top card. You're gonna push up until your thumb hits it and uh, is square with the rest of the packet. Then you're gonna bring your hand up and grab this card with the uh, middle finger and the forefinger here. You're then gonna pull this all the way out of the packet and then turn it on top of the packet, showing a joker also on top. Now the cool thing is because the setup, you could push this card off and show it very cleanly. Uh, that's because of the cards that are back to back. So that's done purposefully so that you could show this card. Usually without that card, uh, this move would look a little bit like this and you're stuck with a double lift. So you would show this card here, you would do the alignment move, and then now you're stuck with a double, right? So you would have to turn this double over, and then you would show that middle card as the uh, joker as well. So for this, what this uh, setup allows you to do is that it allows you to have a card uh, not only for a color change later on, but also as a impromptu double backer. So you could show the uh, bottom joker, then you could show the uh, top card to also be a, uh, a joker here. You could push this off very cleanly. And notice that I've kept a little bit of a break. So when I place the cards back, I keep a break uh, between the bottom card and the rest of the packet here. So I could push this card off, show it very cleanly. But then when I place it back, I could do a triple lift, turning all those cards face down. And now I'm going to bring them to my right hand for the last move here. So the last move is going to be very, very simple. I'm just going to use the friction of my left hand to pull this card to the left. I'm going to pull the next card to the left as well. And then I'm going to turn that middle card over. So remember, this is a double. Not only is it a double, but it's also a back to back double. So you might want to keep extra care to make sure that that card's as square as possible. But you could show now that that Joker is in three places, uh, which shouldn't be magical because really you haven't shown the packet as anything else. But here's the magical part when you turn those three jokers into the aces. So the way we're going to do that is by use of the uh, paintbrush change. So very, very easy. We're just going to place this double down. We're going to push it and squirt up with the rest of the cards. And then we're going to pull back. That's it. That's essentially the change here. Super, super simple. You're not doing anything too complicated. You're not doing one of these, uh, you know, shin limb magic passes that I require pretty much uh, a full time tuition to Hogwarts. Anyway, so you're going to push this card here. You're going to pull it back. And now that's the first transformation here. Then you're going to turn this card face up. At the same time, you're going to do a pinky pull down or if you want to buckle, whichever one gets your break there. And you're going to pinch this double with the fingers of the right hand. Now pinching that double, you're going to turn over this bottom card and show the fact that you've transformed those three jokers into three aces very, very cleanly with no sign of any extra jokers here whatsoever. Now, if you want, you could square this packet up and you're going to do a variation of the Ascanio spread here where you just use friction to pull this card and you use your thumb to uh, move the top card so that now you're left with a double here. So this card is actually a double. You're doing a variation, a three card variation of Arturo de Ascanio's uh, Ascanio spread, a wonderful move there. And uh, now you could show the fact that you just have three aces. Now you don't want to overshow it. You don't want to be one of these um, overproving magicians that write rants on Facebook. But 
it's a nice little bit of a routine here and something that gets you in uh, anytime you need to just introduce the uh, Monty premise. I like it because again, it's very quick. You're showing uh, the fact that you have three jokers here very, very cleanly. And then ultimately you're able to just show the fact that uh, there's a quick transformation here. So it's a very nice sort of trick and uh, it's done before it starts pretty much. So it makes use of that wonderful Animan Christ Christ alignment move. And I think it's fairly simple to do. So that trick is called why Vernon is an overrated hack. That's what I call that particular trick. Uh, all because of Facebook comments left by old, indignant, out of touch magicians. So that's that's why I decided to call that. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for watching this. Uh, I, I don't like I don't like ending this with this weird shot of my lower body uh, distorted by the wide angle lens. I don't like that. But you know what? It's an aesthetic that season three started. Season three is going to keep it this way. All right. Season three is going to keep it this way. We're not going anywhere. We're out here. So thank you guys. Uh, make sure to do all the things that people do. Ham radio. It's starting. I'm going to have a separate channel dedicated to ham radio. So you might want to subscribe to that ham radio. Of course, is my podcast with um, DJ Danny Dizzle. And uh, we're going to be talking all sorts of stuff about cards, about magic, about uh, life in general, really. So do that. I'm gonna go figure out different ways to use a plush Snorlax to hopefully get me some women. See you again when I 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 see you again.